gift, give the groomsmen something, whether it's a piece of jewelry or whatever. Um, this year, I got the opportunity to do that for my son's wedding. And the bridesmaids are getting a makeup bag or a purse or, uh, you know, a little, little handbag kind of. She has five bridesmaids and I could make them all the same, you know, exactly the same. No, mm -mm, can't do it. Five girls, all individuals, all got to have a different one. The only thing I could have made them plain and just done as the bride has asked me to do is put or monogram their initials on. And I like being given free reign on certain parts of creativity. And with this one, she said she didn't pick a font. She didn't. The only thing she did specify was makeup. Well, a, a, an item small, you know, not something extravagant. And uh, that it had their monogrammed initials on in the wedding color of Hunter Green. Let me tell you, finding Hunter Green is a fun trip. I had to, I got samples before I got, because I had to get like 12 yards of Hunter Green fabric for the groom stuff, the bridesmaid stuff, and the groomsmen. So <clears throat> we finally cut, you know, came to terms with a color of Hunter Green. Some companies think, Olive is under green and it's not. I uh, to do the bridesmaids makeup purse. What I did to save time because it was so took so, it seemed like it took forever to find the right hunter green. I purchased some pouch size bags that were just canvas, just cream color, and they all have this little. I'll show you what they look like. Well, this is after I did my little handiwork. They all have a strap. So it's like a, you know, a little wristlet kind of thing. Um, it was straight up cream colored canvas, just regular canvas color. I took some dye. I dyed them. The reason, I didn't have to do that because you'll see when I show you how it's made. But I did it because if for some reason, for any reason whatsoever, something happens to the outside, the outside part of it, and they have to take it off and have, to have it redone or, or mended or whatever, they can still use the makeup bag as it is, like this. They have no lining in them, as you'll see. There's nothing there. It's just a just a little zipper pouch kind of thing. Well, I dyed them, and then I uh, just had to... Now, there's another reason why I did that. Canvas fabric shrinks. So even though when I got these, the size of the of these was an inch bigger all the way around. So it shrunk in a, a half inch this way and this way and long ways. I washed and dried them because in the dyeing process and then drying them, they did shrink some, which actually they shrunk to a better size uh, before they were a little bit on the too big size. So you don't have to dye them, but you can I measured this bag, and where's my ruler? There it is. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had it on the table. It fell off. So after washing and drying, you measure your bag. And this one measures to be <laughs> on the outside. It measures to a lovely eight inches. That's eight inches. So. You can do this a couple different ways. What I did was I cut one long strip for the outside and one long strip for the inside. I cut it larger than the bag by an inch. So that means if this is eight inches, because you have to account for it kind of wrapping around. It's not much space to wrap around, but it is a little bit. That would be 16. I cut 17 inch strip. By and I added an inch in the width because the width of this um, after washing and drying is five inches. So I did a six inch wide by 17 inch strip. Just like this. This is the lining. Um, the outside I made for this one as the plain, you know, the plain hunter green. It's a sat. This is a really nice brocade kind of satin weight. It's gorgeous. Um, then the, actually, <laughs> this is actually two pieces. I lied. The, the ones afterwards I did do is one piece. 
But then I wanted to make it look like there was a seam on each side, so I ended up stitching in. That's why you give yourself that extra inch, just in case you change your mind on how you want to design it. So if you, you technically, you could do it, like I said, several different ways. You can cut two pieces of your outside fabric, by eight by, no, nine by seven, nine by seven, and two of your inside for your line, nine by seven. Or you can do, like I did at the end, is cut the long strip, the, let me get this right, six by seven, 17, yeah, six by 17. Now, instead of trying to figure out you now what was halfway up and this and that for it, because I'm thinking, because when you put the pockets on the inside, if you're going to do pockets in it, you don't have to. If you don't, then it's a real quick kind of uh, project. I cut a piece for the pockets an inch less than the height. So it's five inches high. I want it to end up at being four inches. So I have basically, yeah, four and a half inches. And I'm going to turn down this top portion. For, this is going to be the top of the pocket. And it gets stitched. But to make sure that it was going to fall right, always double check yourself when you're, when you're making something up or doing your own little design thing. I laid it on top of the piece. And I have to keep in mind I'm going to have about a three-eighths inch seam on top. And then this big, this pocket part goes in this inside. So you can do, sometimes I'll do this even. I'll go ahead and take a pin. Where are you? <laughs> I just had pins in my hand. Uh, working on several projects, you get kind of crazy. So I took, just for visual effect, for me, I'm a visual person. So I took it and... And you can press it down, which is, also, is always a good idea. I'm going to press it at the end anyway. Um, fold it down. Pin it in place just to see if it's going to look okay. And the reason why I made the pocket piece the exact same width as the outside is because when you go to stitch it as a whole, you don't have to do... A bunch of extra seams. In other words, what I mean is you don't have to stitch the pocket on there and then stitch the side seam at the same, you know, afterwards. You stitch them all together at the same time. It uh, also keeps your size the way you want it, the size that you need to have it to be. So with that in mind, I'm going to kind of give you an idea. The way I'm pinning this to kind of show you. Okay, so what I, because when you make these, you don't want the top of the pocket to be right there behind the zipper. You want it down, recessed down a little bit. I recess it down about an inch because when I do this, I forgot to turn top down. And you can, you can change your, your, uh, your hemming of it, like the top hem of it for the edge. And you can make it a quarter inch if you want, if you want it a little bit wider, but you don't have to. Um, I mean, well, you, it always has to end up the same length as your bag, and I'll show you what I mean. So that way, on the inside, when you look inside it, you're going to see this. This is the top. I don't know if you guys know. Let me turn. No, that light is on. And the top of the pocket. I can grab some light. Top of the pocket is here. I have got to figure out this lighting thing, people. I just, I'm not good at it anymore. Um, so that's the inside. When I make these, I do it. Not in A to Z stage. <laughs> I do the more tedious stuff first. So I would put the pocket thing in here. And I'd do it. And so, but I'm going to do it like as if you were looking at a pattern to read the instructions. So you do the outside pieces and you put your outside pieces together. You put them together this way. You, if you're doing the two six by eight pieces, okay? You stitch one side seam first. Then you can either serge the whole edge of it, or you can turn down the whole edge and stitch it. But do not turn down the top edge yet. You do that. That's the very last thing you do on this. On this 
make a purse. That's the last thing you do. You don't, you don't hem the top at all. And you'll see why. So I've got my two pieces stitched together. Oh, there you can see the light hit it. I see where the seam is. Okay. I have to remember that light over there. And then for the monogramming, I took the a contrasting hunter fabric. Because there were different shades of hunter green. I found different sheens and shines and stuff like that. And I did the I'm gonna get the light again. The monogramming. I can't get it to get the light. Monogramming on these little hearts. I wish, there we go. Kind of see it that way, can't you? But where's a flashlight? That'll do it. Show the flashlight. It's just some of this lighting. So there we go. There's the <laughs> the things we do to get to do stuff on camera. But there's the monogram on the heart, and this gets placed in the center of one of these two panels, and you determine which is the top, which is the bottom. So I'm going to place it. You have to remember, I, you haven't so sewn the side seam, so your center is from where that side seam is going to end to the other side. Now you can measure it, measure it. I, I try to eyeball it most of the time and make sure that it's level up. Now one thing I do here, you notice I have that extra fabric around the uh, around the uh, embroidered part, or the monogram, the heart-shaped part. <laughs> and that's because I'm going to tuck that under. Now, in hindsight, I just thought about, it. after I got all these little monogram things done, they're like an applique. I mean, they're, literally, you could turn that into an applique. Uh, you just trim the outside off or leave it there and then put a, you know, a glue-on kind of back thing. And then you can use it as an applique. I should have monogrammed directly onto the bag instead of having to do this extra step. So hindsight 2020, I should have done the monograms on the, the six by eight piece and then made the bag. But I made them separate. But it's okay. I like three-dimensional, I guess, is what you call it. But now what I'm doing, I'm pinning this on here to avoid wiggles because when you're dealing with a heart shape it will change position especially on slippery fabric like this in a heartbeat and i don't want it slipping around so i'm pinning it to the front i'm gonna get my flashlight in a minute <laughs> um the next thing after it's been pinned to it well you can see the pin there in the light yeah, yeah. after i pin it to it i have to get rid of this edge i can do that several different ways i can put a you know, try to gather up some little thin lace and put around it and cover that up and then stitch that on there. Or I can do this. This is what I did. I got my pointy sewing scissors, like these guys. And I'm going to go around the heart, making little snips like you do when you're, um, after you do stay stitching around a curve. And you do those little snips so that it, when you press it and you seam it, it will lay flat. That's what I'm doing because this is rounded. So it needs the same kind of uh, clipping. And you use that. I think mean, because it's got that real thick satin stitching around the edge of the heart, I can do it just right up to that stitching. I don't have to worry about it messing it up. And this allows for you to tuck it under and for it to lay right and for you to tuck it under. Then you're going to stitch around it. Now I have found that I have uh, um, I'm playing around with this vintage machine with the cams <laughs> in the straight stitch settings and I discovered quite a few really cool things about it that I didn't know before how to get it to do a real thick satin stitch like I did on, on the uh, on one of the pieces and uh, it's pretty playful I must say I've had a lot of fun uh, learning about this particular Kenmore and how cams work and how they don't like to work on certain things either. Now the stabilizer is still on the back of this applique and you're like, why'd you leave that in there? Well, it gives it more strength to the 
purse itself. And it also makes the design kind of be consistent, you know, with wear and tear and that kind of thing. I got one more little snippy doodle here. Okay. So now I've got these little snips, you know, around. See how I cut it? And I'm going to tuck those under. I'm going to tuck them under as far as they'll go. And so you go, you tuck under about about an inch worth. At least that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, excuse me, my head is, I'm going to lay it down and then pin or that where I've just tucked it under. That also helps it stay where it's supposed to be, like in the middle and even and all that good fun stuff. And I bought myself, because I hadn't bought any in a while, is a new container of dressmaker pins. Word to the wise, after a while, and if you sew a lot, you're going to need to get, go through your pins and go, go, go through and find out which ones are in, you know, still like brand new shape, and which ones aren't. But if you know that you've got a bunch of dull ones in there, throw the whole thing out. Seriously, throw the whole thing out, get yourself a new set of dressmaker pins. You will thank me for it later. I got to where every time I turn around, I've got a bent pin or I've got a pin that feels like it's got glue on it. It won't go through the fabric. How did I get rid of them? I finally broke down and got some new pins, and I'm so glad that I did. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any fuzzy ends trying to crop back out from where I snipped it. And then once I finish doing that, we are going to very, very genteely. One of the things that you can do is you can use a straight stitch around this, but my suggestion use a zigzag. Why a zigzag? A zigzag stitch will actually pull under those little spots that they look like they're popping back out. You know, it's just like kind of un unavoidable because you're working on a circular kind of bend surface. I can't pin it up. My uh, index finger has a little bit of arthritis in it and it does just like yelling at me the last couple of days. It doesn't want to do anything. It doesn't want to, like I can't feel it. So that's why it takes me a little bit of time, and I do apologize for the time frame on that, to tuck this under because I'm being very meticulous. This is for my son's wedding, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, don't do what I just did. I'm sorry. My age, and I'd always seen, I think it was my grandmother. Yeah, I know my mother did it about when she was sewing and holding the pin in your, in your mouth, <laughs> mouth while you're trying to, you know, go through it. And it, it's not a good practice because you get to hurt yourself. I just, I don't always do it, though. That's the funny thing. I don't always do it. Just every so often I find myself, hey, wait a minute, you're not supposed to do that, so. Nope. And I got real excited. I had a, something came on the, on the I think it was Facebook or something somewhere. And it said to answer this question. I answered the question and said, because if you, if you're picked, it was a contest. It was a contest for a t-shirt. And it said, and if you win, you win a free t-shirt. And I go, free t-shirt? Well, they had a couple different t-shirts that they pictured in it. And one of them, it was fate, I swear, has my, my business name on it. It said, so what? And I go, no. -uh. I don't ever enter contests, let me tell you. I don't, but when I saw that, I saw that So What t-shirt, I had to have it. I had to win that dang shirt. So guess what? <laughs> I got my So What t-shirt. <laughs> and they, they picked my little name, and I got my little name, I got my shirt, and I said, you know what? I need to make t-shirts. <laughs> now, see, it's only me. I find more and more stuff to give myself to do to drive myself crazy. I think that's part of being creative. This is, and I like I said, I am sorry it's taking me a while to pin this, but I have this thing where if it doesn't look right, I'll rip it apart and put it back together. I did that once. What did I do that to recently? What was it? I took a, oh yeah, the flower girl, flower girl dresses, the one, first one, when I put, okay, that's a dull pin that goes in the garbage, 
You find a pouch. You find a pen that won't go in. Throw it away. Throw it away. Um, it's supposed to be able to go through the stabilizer. I looked at it. I put the the, uh, the gathered poofy crinoline look stuff and, and you know the tooling in there. I didn't like the way it looked. It didn't look right. There's something wrong with it. I ripped it all out. Redid it. And I really didn't. I really don't have all that kind of time to do that kind of stuff now, with less than two weeks to go. So that's why I take a little bit more time because I don't want to get see have something come out and go. I need to do that over. I don't want to do a monogram over. Although I did keep the initials programmed in my <laughs> in my <laughs> embroidery machine. Um, that's a great thing about an embroidery machine. You can save what you did up to a certain amount, and then you got to put on something. I got one more pinning, I think, on the master after I stick myself. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I wish I had eyes in my fingertips so I could see where the needle's coming out so I don't have my finger there. It doesn't always work. And I, I try real hard, but I don't know. One day I'm going to have to get my glasses, and uh, I'm hoping that I can get the surgery so I don't have to wear glasses. I and make my nose sweaty. But now I could also, and you can do this as well for something like this, instead of pinning all around it and then stitching it, you can baste it on. I'm just really bad with hand needles and basting these days, so I avoid that like the plague. And put this one in here. And I stick that end in there. The last one, I think. Well, that goes in there. Now, sometimes, if you want like a three dimensional effect for something like this, you could put some either batting under there or uh, you know, like cotton batting, or you can do polyfill. But then polyfill can, well, you know, it gets kind of after a while, it's like clumpy. It all shifts to one side. I prefer the cotton batting. I thought about doing that. And I go, will you stop coming up with ideas and just get the thing done? <laughs> like, okay, okay. I get too, sometimes I get a little too creative in my head, but all right, now you're going to go move her there. All right, so I've got it all pinned down. Move my pins. And this. You know, I never see anybody do that on a video. How do they do that? If you're talking and you're teaching, how do you not have to have something to drink? I don't get it. But anyhow, <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um. I have it all pinned out on here, and the goal is to make sure that I don't have to add anything else to this, like one, I'm putting these teen, teeny tiny pearls around the heart, just because when I stitched it, it has, the, the I did the finishing stitch on it, it didn't quite make it nice and neat, so I'm going to do the little pearls around it. Now that I may hand stitch, actually. And I think I'm better. Um, just because it'll look so much better that way. I think it'll be cute. Um, the other thing I contemplated was stitching like a pearl in the little heart. You know, that's not a bad idea. And then my future daughter-in-law is going to go, you went nuts with these, didn't you? I was like, yeah. Okay. Putting on the applique, because I already got the satin stitching around the edge, I'm going to use one of the cams for my Kenmore and this one it's it has a zigzag symbol on it and it's so it's kind of small to large that's to let you know you can do a wide zigzag with it and I, I'm still trying to figure a couple things out with this machine I get the cam in there and sometimes it doesn't go in right away or like doesn't snap in I'm fussing with it I don't know which one's the right hole to use <laughs> if there is a different and it doesn't go down all the way so then I shut it right and I have to turn the handle. I'm going to put the heart in here because I never know when. And then it clicks into place as I'm stitching. And I don't know why. There's got a, There's no lever and there's no switch like some of the other ones I have. Or you can just like clamp it in. So I don't know. And I'm going to put it. My needle right now is to the left. So I'm going to drop that needle down just inside that hard, stiff, satin stitch edging. Now I have it set on two on stitch width 
with, and I have it on three on length. For whatever reason, it does exactly what I want it to do. I don't have a manual for this yet. I'm trying to find one. Um, I think I found one online. But right now, it's not in the budget. And I'll just have to read it online as I go. So I'm... This machine, it's a desk model, and it has the knee uh, control for instead of a foot pedal. And I love those because you have more control over the stitching. So I'm going to see if this is going to behave itself. Can you hear it? Can you hear that click, click? I got to see if it went put itself down. It didn't go down, did you, you stinker? It does about five stitches, and then it like clicks into place. I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, you want me to hit you? <laughs> Come on. I don't know why it does that. It's just so odd. Because the last time, it just it actually did what it was supposed to. There's got to be some kind of a release or something, but there isn't one, unless it's when I do this. There's some... There's a trick. See, not having a manual isn't always a good thing. <laughs> I'll smack it. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt you again, more. Will you just like put your little cam down for me, please? You you don't have like a, a button anywhere or anything like that. I don't know if I'm supposed to do something else. I've tried all kinds of things with this thing. Unless it's oh, no, don't don't those feed dogs. I just notice what is that on there? Oh, that's a button. There's gotta be. Yeah, I've looked at these things. Oh hush. All four holes look exactly the same on the bottom. Now, I wonder, do you have to put in with the number at the top? Is that the deal? Maybe it is. Mm. All this time. Okay, you can laugh now. <laughs> mm. When you put your cams in, apparently on this machine, you have to have it right side up. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, science machine. You know more than I do. I just said, hit me in the head and says, try putting in a row with the number on the top. And then, see, the number's at the top, the design for it's etched in, the design. It's on the bottom. And it went in, went poof, just like that. You're picky. But I love you anyway. So we're going to go around the edge. Ah, oh, see, some of it just tried, just came popping out of there. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Let's go, girly. Now that I figured that out, you're not zigzagging. Why are you not zigzagging? Oh, I forgot. Only forgot. When you zigzag on this, <laughs> you put it how how wide you want it, which I have it on a two. I'm going to put it to three because I want a little wider. And it has a little red line. And you match that with the length, the red line. Because you're not, zigzags aren't are measured by length. They're measured by width. I forgot. You're going to do what I want you to do, right? Uh -huh. I know you are. Or maybe not. I don't know. Why it's not doing that, I don't know. It did it yesterday. Or, I think this is it. I think, I think, I think. Because I know that is if you want to do a straight stitch. Let's see if the needle moves. Now it's doing it, hey, thinker. So I'm going to put it on a four and four. <laughs> now, when I come around a bend on this stitch, you got to slow it down a little bit because it'll go crazy. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I got stabbed. Here it goes. And now it's doing the zigzag like it's supposed to. It's so funny. Sometimes I think these sewing machines are life. I think they know when they're messing with me. I really do. You tuck that tip in because it could pop, trying to pop out. Okay. There you go. And I'm going to go over it another time. Just because. Why'd you do that? You'll do it there, but you won't do it there? Fine. Oh, okay. I have to watch it because I can't tell. Sometimes I can't tell if it's a or zaggy. <laughs> you gotta back it up. Go reverse, put the lever up. And then come 
around the corner. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly why I do it twice. Because it likes to, as I've said about satin before, it likes to slide. It's not a funny design. I think that's what it's doing. You're not supposed to do a design anything. Wait, which one did I put in here? It's the right one. Okay. I've tried a couple different cans, and I just, it's just neat to mess with them. I see what you're doing, and I don't like it. Don't do that no more. <laughs> it wants to do a design of its own. Well, phew. It'll zigzag up to it. It'll straight. Down. That's it. Always turn your hand wheel towards yourself, not away. I'll tell you what it does with a surgery when you do that. Or at least the one I was working on. I had a surgery that went on the fritz. Tanya was off. It would not stitch. So in the midst of my trying to fix it, I turned the hand wheel away from me. And that was the last thing I did to it before I hooked it back up to it. Guess what? You want to make your surgery so backwards? Turn the wheel the other way. <laughs> I was so freaked out. Like, okay, I've never seen a surgery uh, so backwards. Never. And I asked a couple people who've been, you know, basically sewing as long as I have. And they say, it does what? I said, it's sewing backwards. He said, I don't even know how you would do that. How would you make it so back? I said, I don't know how I did it. I said, but it's sewing backwards. I said, it's like it's haunted. I know there's a poltergeist that lives here with us, but you no, know, hey. I told him, stop playing with my machines. <laughs> I don't know why I said him. I have a feeling of a guy. But I've never seen, I've never, and you talk about strange. If, if you know anything about surgeries, they don't sew backwards. This one was. It was stitching backwards like a fiend. So I'm going around a second time. Oh, yeah, I am. I tuck in all these li little <laughs> uh, bumps and stuff. And I'm getting better at that. I sometimes I forget to let my knee off of the knee pedal. <laughs> like, whoops. And it like, stitches too far. I'm taking the pins out as I go because that way I can see if it's puckering or not. Come on, get no, you take the pin out. I'm tired of getting stick stuck. <laughs> oh, oh, if you're wondering where I'm reaching, it's to put the pins in my, my magnet dish. Should put it over here. I don't like to I'm trying to avoid knocking too many things on the floor. <laughs> like that is yeah, very pointy. Yeah, these are brand new pins, and I can tell. <laughs> they are sharp, but there's nothing like a good, a good sharp dressmaker pin. Sometimes it just makes it more enjoyable. Come on, baby, we're just almost done. Almost done going around the world in two minutes. <laughs> Take that pin out. And I want what I want to make sure is that there's no, uh, you know, funny looking spots. Like I can see this thread hanging out. Let me just snip that off there. As close as I can. Now, I do have a little pair of scissors that I absolutely adore. My baby scissors. I think I put them away already. Probably. They have a little curved edge. I highly recommend everybody have a pair of those. Because of little spots like this where it looks like got little hairs hanging out. You just snip it off. And it doesn't hurt anything. Just keep some angle up this way, kiddo. Oh, I've stitched too far. It's okay. I've already stitched it twice as it is. So I can just pull that out of the same ripper. I think I've got what I want. This whole string off here. And actually, I'm not going to use a seam ripper. I have a tendency to put holes in satin with seam rippers. A little light light. And a little mishap with the vest. So this 
I stitch past it and get that out of there because then it looks like an obvious oops. <laughs> and I don't want that there. It's already stitched on there twice, so it's not going to hurt anything to cut. Get that little two stitches out of there. Pull it, I'm just going to pull it to the back. That's what you want to do with something like this. You just pull it to the back because it's going to be, you know, on top of the um, outside of it, the bag anyway. Get that stitch out of there. That's another good thing about choosing the wide zigzag stitch. Because that's what it did. I wonder what, what wheel it was I had in there that made the other stitch. It was wonderful. It was like a back stitch. It's like a zigzag back stitch. But it was a cam. I don't know. That hurt. Pull this off. Like this. Yeah, this that was a lot of pins to put in there. But I had a lot of snips. And I did a lot of snips because of it being curved. So it would lay better. Let me see. Where did I put ouchie? There it is. So I'm using this because lighting in here isn't all that great. To make sure I don't miss anything. And then trim off the, I call them hairs, they're, they're actually threads that are sticking up. That don't need to be sticking up. Mm -hmm. If I get that thread to come to the back, that'd be great. Stick it up there. It doesn't hurt to have a flashlight around when you're sewing. We don't all have the best lighting in the world in our homes. Lord knows I don't. Some rooms in this house are really dark. And it's not because there's no light on it. It's just, it's just how it is. Okay. So even this edge up. It has little threads sticking out. Well, it's from the turning of it under. And I just go around the edge and just fix it. You know, neaten it up. I'll stop pressing up on my knee. Okay. Hopefully I did that right. Whew. I get nervous when <laughs> I have to trim stuff. But I don't because these are sharp and I do not want to cut the main fabric. Now if I did do that like I did with one of these, I did I cut it too close and cut a hole into it. I just took a piece of the exact same matching material. A little, a little white oak, like a patch. And I took some Stitch witchery and glued that sucker to the back, and you can't tell that it's, that it's been patched. So, you know, there's different things, little secrets and tricks you can do when you make mistakes. I mean, we all have that occur on occasion. Um, it seems like, goodness, you can't see that. The more uh, creative I get, <laughs> the more I learn about not <laughs> to not be so dang creative. Okay, so make sure I don't have any funky looking stuff. I mean, this is just hard, dark hunter green. It's kind of hard to tell anything is wrong with it. Unless you have, yeah, you can hold it like this to see if there's strings sticking up. Then you can go like, oh, there's one. You know, you just snip it. Okay. Well, there it is on the front. All sewn on there. I feel like this. Just like that. Hey, good old flashlight. Okay, once you've sewn, if you're doing it separately, your applique. So if you have an applique and you want to sew it onto something, this is kind of how you do it. And this is just a zigzag stitch. A nice tight one works best all around the edge. Now what I have to remember is I need to disengage the cam because now all I'm doing is straight stitching. Thank you, Kenmore. Thank you for teaching me something new today. Making me look silly. That's okay. Shut her down. Now, now you can go and do this other side seam. So I double check myself. You know how that when you do when you uh, are building something, they tell you to measure twice, cut once. That's what you do here. So the way I measure is I take one of the bags. And I lay it on top of this. This is the right sides together. So the applique is on the inside. I lay it down. Put the bag on top. 
and then I decide how deep my, I want my hems because this is cut bigger than the bag on purpose. So I've got, I did just like I normally do, half inch away all the way around. So I'm going to do a half inch side seam, half inch bottom seam, and half inch on the top edge, but not yet. You're wondering, why is she doing that? Do that? There's a reason. I'm going to show you. Remember, there's a zipper on top of that bag. And that zipper on top of that bag is very, very important. That you don't catch the teeth in anything you put on there. That's the tricky part. And the side seam down this way. And now I didn't, I, I just kind of thought up, you know, this kind of design. But the, uh, I could have made the bags myself, you know, from scratch. Made a bag with just fabric and things. And I thought, well, it would be nice to have something that has a, what do you want to call it? Has some strength to it. Because you just use satin for a makeup bag. Eventually that thing's going to be torn up. And satin's not a strong material. It's um, It frays like crazy. I, I always make sure I have pinking shears because it's... It like I call it hair or spider webs. It gives me like these satin fiber spider webs. Almost knocked that off, didn't I? And uh, as beautiful as it is, it can be a pain to work with. And I've done that. And trim off your threads, top and bottom. Turn it right side out. Oops, I forgot to do the bottom hem. Sorry. I knew something was missing. Yeah. So it's still across the bottom. This one. I'm going to do the bottom just a little less than a half an inch just because it, it gives me more top to be able to turn under. Um, you'll see why I say that also. And it's always nice to a little bit more to turn down for your top hem, so to speak. Lock your stitches in, go back a little bit, and there's that. I'm just thankful that I haven't done one of these where I sew sewed the wrong end and had it on there upside down yet. <laughs> I'm on my last bag, so it's like holding my breath. Do it like this. Turn it out. Now to make your corners pointier, you do a diagonal cut. You can go like, I'll show you how to do that. You do a diagonal cut as close as you can, as close as you can to the stitching here. So it'll be like this, like that. Cut that point off to where you got an angle. When you go to turn right side out, that point comes out a lot better. So I'll have better do it for the other one. If I do it for one, I better do it for the other one, right? Uh, yeah, I'm just showing you a little things I think of as I go. And like that. And I left the excess from it being, you know, a quarter inch seam hem, whatever, because it actually fills out the, some of the gap between this outside cover and the inside. Now the inside is the next part I will do. But I like to put them together as I go just to see how it's looking. So I'll put this one on here to see. And also to make sure it fits. Get in there. Okay. And you put your hand inside the bag. You got extra stuff in here. It's from washing it. Also, <laughs> you think of funny things going on. So. Um, bleh. Okay, now, so when you try the outside part on, that's another reason why I use minimal hems on them. You want to make sure it comes above the zipper. When you just dash your stick it in there, it's above the zipper. And you say it's above, because you can't see the zipper. That's because you're going to turn that top down and stitch it under the zipper. That's why I told you don't stitch the top yet. Don't hem the top. Now, you can if you want to. I like to do it at the very end. It's up to you how you want to do it. Um, 
find out what works for you and then just go ahead and do it. <laughs> okay, so I have the pocket piece stitched, or not stitched, pinned to the inside. And I'm going to turn down the top part of the pocket and just stitch the pocket top by itself. Now you can determine how many slots you want in your pocket. Uh, I've chose three. It just kind of worked. Um, other than that, and how wide you want each one. Now I had, to, I was like, going, okay, so I want one for like, say, a tube of lipstick. So one's going to be a narrower one, and then another one maybe for a comb or something. You know, really small ones. And I thought to myself, yeah, and one more wide one. So I have three, and I measured across the whole pocket section, the seven inches, and I divided it into three in that manner. So mine has a three and a half inch pocket space, a two and a half, and then a two and a half. I think that adds up correctly. <laughs> That's what I ended up with. And I came, came to it. Because I first started out thinking this was an eight inch finished item and it's not ancient it's not eight inches when it's finished and i thought it was but it's not okay, so there's that so now the pocket has got a finished top now i can turn it down one more time to make it more you know well it should, if i had searched the edge of this i would not have to do that i would not need to do that you don't need to do it you can do whatever you want but for my aesthetic purposes, <laughs> I'm going to turn it down really narrow. I'm going to take that same seam I just did, turn it down again to it's half that width, and it makes it a nice stiff um, upper edge. And that way, I don't have to worry about the fabric frame and I have a nice finished edge. So we're going to do that one more time. This ends up being about an eighth inch. So I turned under a half inch. And a half inch. Half inch? Yeah, it did turn almost a half inch. It was like three eighths. And then I'm going to turn down half of that three eighths to make a finished edge. And I'm doing five of these, and they're all different. <laughs> and this likes to slide too, even though it's like not the silky, silky satin, but it's a satin. And it goes, and down. Uh, now, you know you have to do the side seams, but you have to do your pockets first. So, I have to go across here. I said, I have my measuring. It's three. Where are you? Let's see if I do three and eight. Because, see, you, the edge of this is actually going to be underneath. It's part of your side seam. So you you have you count you have to account for that. Now you can account for it by a quarter inch in or a half inch in, whatever you choose to have as your side seam to make it fit the inside of the bag. Mine, I always come in a half inch. So then I go one, two, three and a half. Three and a half. I want it to be exactly three and a half inches wide. So let's do it this way. Well now let's see. One, two, three, all right, three and a half. Three and a half in here. I'm going to put a straight pin where that's going to start. And same thing on the bottom to match. So where, way I, the way I keep my line straight with that as you're going through a, a wide piece of material is where the pin goes into the first time into the fabric the first time, that's where I want to make sure that my thread ends up. And then two inches, two and a half inches, I'm sorry. Two and a half. That's for whatever. I mean, I don't know if there's a rule of thumb or anything. Else. Oh, come on, fingers work. Magnets are great, but sometimes you can't grab stuff. So I have left Five inches, two and a half, two, yep, two and a half, so it's going to go in there. 
Oh, I don't. You only have to mark two. I'm sorry. Yeah, because because <laughs> you did the first one at the end of the first pocket. The next one is for the end of the second pocket and the beginning of the third one. And the third one's last seam is the side end. So you really have to make two rows. Get these pins out of here. It'd be great. And two and a half from there is there. So to make the pockets part, I'll, I'll put it in just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Like that. Hey, come back here. And I hope you guys never get any arthritis like this. Especially not in your index finger being left-handed. You can go. Okay. Now, here we go with the light again. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I need to like, hang this up here somewhere. Okay. Here is the inside. All right. On the far end. I might fold this in half, maybe. You can see I have, this is where the pocket starts, is on this side. And it goes all the way there. Okay. I hate that I can't, can't really give you. Why are you grabbing me? Oh, great. I just undid the threading of the machine. I get to thread the machine for you. See, that's why I don't like satin sometimes. It likes to mess with me. Oh, goodness. See, there we go. I can't see it. Oh, my goodness. It's not one thing, it's another thing. All right. Well, that's a little better, <laughs> I guess. I gotta rethread the machine. Because this, in its infinite wisdom, with the little hairy edges, decided to grab the thread while I'm trying to show you this. Um, on this side, where I pinned the pocket to, you can actually see it better now. This is the edge that's actually going to be a part of the side seam. This is gonna be your other side seam. So when I go, when I stitch this, right sides together, I'll have a seam here and a seam here, a half inch in. You have to count for that half inch when you're measuring the pocket sizes. So I went from that half inch in over to three and a half inches, put my pins in at three and a half inches. So where this pin actually enters the fabric, I put one at the top, one at the bottom, and I aim for those. Then you put in at the end of that second pocket, the ending up for it becomes the beginning of the last one. The last one ends where your seam is. I can't believe I've got to rethread this machine. Uh, okay, if nobody knows how to thread a, an old Kenmore vintage <laughs> desktop, this is how you do it. First, you fuss at yourself for pulling it out. And I don't want any, any amount of excess thread. The thread is unwinds away from you. There is a thread guide. And it's, I hate doing this when my arthritis is backing up. There's a thread guide on the back side. You come through that. I call it a corkscrew. <laughs> and there's a little corkscrew thread guide on the front. You come through that. You go down between the tension discs up where that little wire hoop is. And you snap it into place. There's a thread guide. Small one on the right-hand side. You come up. Make sure your needle is at its highest point. This one you thread through the little hole in the thread lever or lever, as some people say. You know, I can't believe I didn't see that. It goes through there. And as you come down, there's another thread guide right to the, it's to the left of the smaller one that you just went through. Then there's a thread guide before you get to the needle. And it's a, Interesting looking thing. You go behind there and then you go through the thread guide in front of the side of the needle. Now here's a trick someone showed me. If you can't get that needle threaded, when you go to cut it, you know how we do it, snip at it, keep snip at it, try to get a nice clean edge. Do it at an angle. Do it at a diagonal cut. For some reason, it goes through the needle easier. It kind of makes sense because you have narrow to fat. I have to I always put the foot down just so I can see where I'm putting it. Foot time sometimes gets in the way. And if it turns out I have to use my magnifying glass, I'm going to be really mad. Sometimes I just look out. 
and I get it first time. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang bobbin throws him away. Get out of my way. Thank you. Now, I gotta find it by putting my the the color of my skin right behind it to guide where I need to put the thread. It helps me see the hole. <laughs> and see, it didn't take that long at all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna do the pockets. So the first set of needles where your side seam is gonna be, that's half inch in. You don't stitch that. Not yet. Mr. Miyagi was a not yet. Go to the second set of pins, which is the beginning of the second pocket in the ending of your first one. Needle in. Press your foot down and here we go. I know you I messed with that. Okay. Oh, I've got something in the way. Sorry. I got something in the way. There's something right in the way. I think it's mad because I had to rethread it. <laughs> Alright. Because I'm going through a thicker bunch of material, so it's... There you go. There's one. So the end of the first pocket is finished at this point. And it, I don't know if you can see this. See this? All this fuzzy stuff that keeps coming out. That's satin. That's what it does. That's why I say, if you can't search every single edge before you get started, trust me, it's a good idea. As a matter of fact, I might run this through the serger in just a second. And this. Come on. And then we go to the next set of pins, which is the end of your second pocket and the beginning of the third one. Put that in there. I love the surgery because it cleans up stuff. It really does. And it's uh, also uh, locks in stitches for you. So about that. Like this. That's why I was talking about threads following me down the hallway. Oh my goodness. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go across the bottom edge with this serger very quickly to get rid of all this. I call it hair. I call it silk, satin hair. I can't stand satin hair. It drives me crazy. It drives me absolutely crazy. And I've got all this. Stuff is over here. Ah! Just hold on, baby boo. I'm going to serve this dish. Sorry about being off camera, but I'm just doing what I gotta do. <laughs> and it will stop all this mess. Look, I know it's gonna be concealed, but this is just drives me down bonkers. Come on. Where are you? Oh, wrong way. Shoot. And the pedal turn around the wrong way. There we go. Um, why, yeah, 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 yeah. Decided not to stitch after all. Oh, I must have a bent needle over here or something. Anyway. Where's my... Oh, come on. I just don't like it when stuff doesn't want to work for me. Come on. In that case, that's a, that's a pain. But anyhow, we're going to take care of this in a minute anyway. My, I forgot. My serger was, uh, it needs a fresh needle. So. And that was a waste of your time, isn't it, wasn't it? But it did trim it up. It did trim all that funky hair stuff off, which is what I wanted anyway. Now we're going to put it right sides together. Here we're going to do the side seams. And the side seams. I wish I could have searched that earlier. But anyway, make sure that when I do half inch, it's going to catch in that edge. And it is very nicely. Cool. Make sure I don't have any pins over here. I'm just going to mess this one up. 
to fold it together. What is in the way over there? It just feels funny. <laughs> oh, and it's the needles in the, in the middle. So I'm going to fold them right sides together and do the, sorry, side seams first, then the bottom seam. Don't do the top seam yet. Just like the other part. So I, and I'll tell you what, that it's a different reason for the insides. It's, there's a whole different reason for it on the inside part. A major big difference because you're doing it to make sure it fits, not so much for the finished uh, part. And it's a different measurement because it's on the inside. Because it's on the inside, not the outside. And for whatever reason, this thing likes to snag that thread up. I don't know why that end thread looks to get sucked in. So there's that side seam. Whoopsie daisy. Because your inside um, circumference, for lack of better words, is a little bit smaller than the outside would be. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's just how it is. Now this is where, if you don't remember, you can mess yourself up. I, <laughs> I almost uh, I almost uh, sewed my, ouch, my lining <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> almost did. Almost sewed it in backwards. That would not be a useful bag at all. It would have no pockets and be wrong part of the fabric showing out. Because if you think about it, when you're putting your hand inside, you want to see the pretty side, the finished side, not the ugly side. And also, too, be careful that you don't sew your pockets shut by leaving the wrong part open. So, here, so when you put your fingers in, this has to be the top because you have to be able to put things in the pocket, right? And this is the bottom part that gets sewn. So we're going to do that. Just stitch across the bottom. I would use a minimal seam for that fact. Because you don't know. I may have to put, I may want to put that can back in there to finish this off. Because I'm still doing that hair thing. Um, and since my surgeon decided it doesn't want to work today either. So I'm just doing a quarter at the bottom. That way I can do a nice little zigzag edge, kind of like an overlock. And that thing just went off the table. Yeah, love the work. Right. This has not been my day, people. It's been a hectic week, and I just lost my bag behind the desk. <laughs> okay. Well, I have five of these things I'm doing. So there's that one. I'm going to put my little... Now that I know how to put the cam in there, the proper way. <laughs> that is just too funny. That is too funny. I just try. I just tested it. And put that in this way. Look, you can move down the way. Snip these extra strings off. I call them cobwebs sometimes. It feels like cobwebs sometimes. And that, now, now it's, not, it's like making a liar out of me. I thought if I put it in there with the number at the top, top, that's how you did it. It's like, no. <laughs> it said no. It's like, no, oh, that's not how you do it. Like you thought you were so smart, human. <laughs> See, it did itself. It put itself down there. <laughs> I know it did. I'll stink her. I don't know why. It's doing this. Let me try. Let me test myself here. Okay, needles all the way high point. All right. And I want to see. 
I've had other cam machines where it actually had a, a little lever that you mess with. This one doesn't want to do that. Come up here. Hmm. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Anywho, I just want this. And this. Uh, and, and off the edge there. Are you going to be fussy with me today? Now that's interesting. There's, there's a trick to this. I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm going to figure it out. Because I have one, you just snap the cam in there. You don't have to worry about it. has one hole that fits that one peg specifically in that position. So I'm not sure. Unless, unless I have to put it here. Oh, let's see. Hmm. So one time it went in, it went right in, didn't it? You heard it. Come on, snap. I'm looking for like a special trap door or a special button. I don't see one. I really don't. Now it's not going to move at all. <laughs> it's like, hey, no. Let's see that. Maybe it's my watch on me three. It went dink. Definitely got to get the manual in it. That's for sure, but it's not going to fray anymore. I stitched it real close to the edge. So it'll be, it'll be, and then I did it twice. So you have to think sometimes outside the box in the respect of if something goofy happens like this. <laughs> and it happens goofy all the time. For me, anyway. Okay. So now we have this done. And we're like, but, oh. Yeah, remember this now. When you have, you can't get your zigzag to work, and you can't get your serger to work, and you don't want it to fray. Pinking shears. So I'm going to very gently, that's why I gave myself that extra half inch on the top, too. Just go across and cut that with the pink shears. That solves all the, because it won't fray now. But the pinking shears are wonderful things, and they're great for that. For that reason, they do not like fraying, so they, they bite it off. <laughs> I'm always trying to figure out which way if this crazy lefty has to flip it to be able to do that. And, and up. Okay. I got the hairs off. Good. Now we're at the last stage of this little gift. Um, now you can choose whether you want your pockets to be to the left of where the zipper opens or to the right. There's no right or wrong way. So you take it, so your pockets are on the inside, okay? And you're going to put it inside the pouch like this. Now I'm thinking this person's probably going to be right handed because there's not many left handers around. Not, not in this family that I'm aware of. And then you're going to put it inside. Make sure your side seams touch your side seams on the inside. Now, one thing that I could do, but first I want to make sure it fits. I think I'm going to do it on this one anyway, just for to show you aesthetically how it benefits you. <clears throat> make sure that you push it all the way from the bottom all the way down in, that it's going to reach fine, and you still have some peeking out the top. That's important. That is your, where you're going to hem it over. But you're not going to hem it over towards the pocket. You're going to hem it over to the other side. And that's because this is now your finished edge, not this part. The inside finished edge is the opposite of the outside. So for your corners also, you want to do the diagonal cut. 
cut them off. Just just to, just cut the point diagonally. Okay, before you do that. Then it doesn't matter on the side seams if you I mean I to me it doesn't matter. If you open them up, you know, you open up the seam and you turn it down and then stitch it. Or if you just put it to the side and stitch it. But aesthetically, you should. Especially on the outside. If this is on the outside, definitely. Inside, not that's not as important. But I open up the seam. Yeah, open up the seam like this, and I'm going to stitch down the amount that is that that ended up above it, which is about a half an inch on there. Well, most if you do this the way with the measurements I have, you're going to end up where all your all your hems are going to be a half inch. That just makes it easier. Because then you don't have, there's no guesswork. You know it's going to be a half inch. So I turn down a half inch. And I'm going to stitch that across all the way around the whole thing, the whole liner. Stitch all the way around. Now you can put a different presser foot for this next step. If you don't really have to if you take your time. Um, you can put a zipper foot on your machine if you like, but it, it's not a you know it's not a do or die situation. As long as you're taking your time, or you're trying to speed zip through it. Yeah, you're gonna need a zipper foot. Otherwise, no. You can use I'm using a satin stitch foot for this whole project. It just it has a wider zigzag space. And it also lets you work around little things. Like, I didn't even count it with these. Um, it lets you see more also. It lets you see more of where your stitches are going. <laughs> okay, that thread spool is just like going to freak me out. <sighs> it did that the other day. It, like, it like got caught on itself. And I know I have the spool on there correctly. It's just gotten towards the end of the spool, I think. I've used a lot of green thread in the last few weeks. A lot of green thread. Now, let me get that out of there. Like this. Yeah, pink, using the pinking shears on the top edge of this, even because it's going to be concealed anyway, it just helps. It can last better. This thing makes a lot of noise. Sometimes. Not all of them. It's one of my quieter machines, but I don't know. I know it's so noisy. All right. I think we got the top end done. Yay! Yes, we do. Let's miss. Snip these. Well, it's all messed up. You'll see what I'm talking about. Those threads. Make sure I don't pull the thread out of the needle again. <laughs> it was embarrassing. And then this way. Okay. So here we have our inside lining with the pockets. The pockets are out. This goes inside. Yeah. Wait a I did that wrong. Sorry. Uh. It goes this way. So, oh, my bad. It goes this way because we're putting our hand into it. See, I told you myself. I have to talk myself through things. So you put it in wrong side to wrong side. So now you have the nice side with the pockets showing this way. Side seams match them up. Underneath the zipper and just outside the zipper. Now this is where it gets a little tedious. Like I said, if you need to use a zipper foot, you may, you go ahead and use one. But if you do it slowly, you won't need one. Because the zipper on top of these little bags is pretty forgiving in that respect. Just be careful because I'm going to you know, stick yourself. You line up. See? You line up the very top of your lining behind that zipper just below the teeth. Now, I don't know if I can show you this. And you do the same thing on the outside. So it's probably going to be easier for me to show you the outside. 
but I have to turn the outside under just a little bit. So you turn under the top of the outside. That's why I told you don't stitch it yet because you want to make sure that it fits. Then you can pin it. Now some people have said it's easier to pin both together. So I'm saying, well, I pin them separately. Whatever works for you. So I'm going to do where I pin the outside by turning it under a half inch. Sometimes not quite a half inch, depending on, you know, your finished look. And I'll show you what the pins look like when that's done. And you stitch all the way around. The tricky part is when you get to where this nubby spot is on either end, where the zipper is, you just slow. Go slow. Just take it slow. Um, that's the best thing I can tell you with that. Okay. So when you pin the top edge, you're going to pin it just below the teeth. Literally right at below the teeth. That's why don't stitch fast. Take your time. If you need to use a zipper foot, use it. If you need to do a one of those old vintage kind of one side straight stitch foot, use that. Whatever works with it. My suggestion is practice with stitching really close to your zippers. Get an old, you know, zipper from something and some scraps of fabric and just practice with it. Um, especially if you're beginning at doing something like this. And now I'm going to pin the lining the same way, but on the inside, just below, excuse me, just below the teeth. And, but I'm pinning out, pinning it from the outside and I'm putting those pins in between the ones I have on the inside. So that way I'm not, I don't have pins on the inside to like mess with. So I'll show you how that comes out. Like pin. You turn, you don't have to, that way you're only having to turn down the uh, outside, not the inside. And you'll see how that looks in just a second. So I'm going to put this one in here. So I'll finish that off. It's because the first one I did, I turned, I didn't turn, <laughs> I didn't hem the inside layer. And oh my gosh, trying to turn down two tops and then pin them, <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was a mistake. <laughs> you learn from mistakes though. So I was like, wait a minute, there's an easier to do this. Just like this. And I did it. The other thing you could do, I just thought of this, is you can stitch the inside lining to it first. And then just do the outside. That's that's actually a better idea. Note to self, next time you make these, stitch the lining in and then stitch the outside. Because you're not going to see the stitching from the lining anyway on the outside. The lining from the outside is the only stitching you're going to see. So that's the stitching, uh, the pinning from the outside. And on the inside, it is literally the same way. Right, I don't know if you can see that part. It's right under, oh, my fingers are in the way. It's right under the stitches, the lining is. So I'm going to stitch around this, and this little beautiful thing will be finished. It doesn't need anything else. It's nice and simple. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to make sure that I don't catch the zipper in. Into that. Yeah, the, around the zipper portion where it's unzipped, where the strap is, it can be uh, kind of nerve-wracking, but you, you can do it. It's not, it's not that bad. Because when you turn down the top, that uh, solves that problem. And it's going to come around it. Because if you ever notice, anything that has a zipper in it anyway, it's going to have a little bit of a gap at the, at the base. And it's the same way with this. So if we're going to come up... I'm just making sure that I pin this before I stitch it. I do not want to mess this one up or any of them. That. See, I'm learning about things, you know, like, oh, wait, you can do that easier. And then, of course, I can tell you I haven't been able to do it yet. But you get the benefit of it. Like I said, stitch the lining to it first. Then take the outside, the cover part, stitch that to it. And it's perfect. It's actually a better better way to do it but I didn't think about that because this was my own little project you know I came up with this own little design <laughs> and I didn't have 
I wasn't giving myself enough time to like kind of think it through through step by step. So if this is there, and I'll show you a finished one. And this is it. All right. Okay. I'm going to start from this side. Now you can either stitch from the inside to the outside. I suggest that's from the out. If you if you don't have the lining stitched to it yet, or prior prior to, stitch from the outside in because it doesn't matter what stitches really look like on the inside. So did that just come off? It sure did. Oh, I just have to remember to line it up. I'm silly like that. I forgot to attach the lining on the inside. <laughs> on one side, I forgot to put the lining up and it attached to it. So let's do this in a couple spots so I don't forget it. I've got so many things going on in my head with this wedding that sometimes I do and forget some things. I end up remembering it, but it's like, in the meantime, the ouch. I don't know. If you don't pick yourself at least 10 times in doing a project, you are not doing your job. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull that up as I go. That's cute. This satin just loves to slide. I tell you what. And sometimes I can't stand it. Can't stand it when it gets like that. All right. I end up poking myself. I just know it. I'm trying to partially turn it so I don't poke myself. Make sure my lining is right there. And the outside is right there. And I'm just going to go for it. Slowly, but I'm going to go for it. And I usually start, the best way I can tell you, start at one of the side seams. That's where it's the bulkiest. And that's where you want to make sure you, you've got everything lined up and not messing stuff up. So as far as needle size goes for something like this, I would I would tend to lean towards a 16 instead of a standard 14 needle just because of thickness. You've got fairly thick, you know, items that you're stitching together. And why is that not under there? Well, I don't know why. I'm going to take this out. I'm lining the side of two. Oh, I didn't put a pin in that one. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? That'd be smart. I would have put a pin in it. I didn't put a pin in this bottom. I mean, side piece. I had it on the opposite side, just not on this side. All right. Not because it's so thick. I do you not want to, what do you call it? Digress to <laughs> a different kind of pin, which is those long ones. I tend to get in the way, and I need more, a few more pins. And where did I put the box of pins? There they are. I don't want to, I've been pinning so many things. I got pins everywhere. So I have to go look for them. Okay, get in here. Don't be argumentative. Just go where I did. Oh, there. That's much better. Uh -huh. yeah, you don't want your pouch to be caught in a zipper. Mm -hmm. That's no fun. I have it there. Yes, I do. There, yes, I do. What is this thing doing there? Oh, it's it's not it. It's not the bag. It's me. <laughs> it's not a really. Get him here. It gets kind of fussy sometimes, but that's because you're trying to do small stuff. Now, the challenge with me doing it on this kind of machine is the fact that it's a um, in-desk version and it's not doesn't have the free arm. Free arm would be ideal for something like this because you're having to go around this little circle. 
um, would be a free arm machine. I have some of those. I just don't like using them right now. I really like this gun one. It's been very good to me. It's done a very good job. Hello. <laughs> Stop picking me, uh, silly pins. I want it to be able to fit in that corner. Just like this. Yeah, going around the corner is kind of tricky. Go around the, the uh, side seam. Alright. Is that it? I think we got it. I think we got it now. I'm going to go around the zipper end first. I like to get the tough stuff out first. Ow! So I'm partially turning. Be careful because it does hurt. It backwards. So that as I stitch underneath the zipper pull part, I don't make it like bunch up or make, you know, funny shapes. And that it will stay there like it's supposed to. Got lost. I should have taken a handle off too. I didn't take the handle. The carry strap. Nah, this way. Come on. And then this is the funky part. And that's why the satin foot comes in handy. So I can actually. Well, first, let me zip this up a little bit. Because it's making funny. Mm. It's too close to the edge. That's what that is. Let's shut the zippers a little bit. Just like, give me some wiggle room. Come on, too much. That should do it. I don't think so. Ouchie. <laughs> That's what, four times now? Yeah, six more to go? Okay. Six more to go! Six more times to poke myself. Alright. Okay. We're starting up this way. Ooh, that's sharp. This is why I wish I'd used a free arm, but it's like, eh, I don't want to have one. I don't want to get one out. Okay. Alright, you get in here. And need all down. I'd be careful not to poke myself to stay close to the edge. Here we go. Uh -huh. Now you can hand stitch it if you want. And then maybe end it up with, you know, top stitching with your machine. It's it's all in how you, you know, how you want it to look or the strength you want to give it. It's all in your hand. I just like making the machine do most of the work. <laughs> I, I don't mind the hand stitching, you know, option, but it just, I just like the finished, the machine finished look, as, as I call it. It's getting real tedious. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And that kit go tiny in there. Why? Oh, that's getting caught on the super pins. The bottom part's like, uh, no, I want to go up there. Like, no, you can't go up there. Is this the other end? I think it is. Ouch! Yeah, that thing hurts. That's the other uh, corner. And if you get, sometimes you get to a thick spot, you need to get a, uh, a gizmo called a thingamajig. And uh, it will go get you over that hump spot, the thick spot. Okay, guys, let's go. Yeah, it's like, you had too much material in there, and I can't hold it. I can't hold it. <laughs> it's supposed to be there. Oh, I want to know why that's doing that. We'll figure it out now. Oh, it's because of the pins. 
pretty crazy. Ouchie. Now where's the spot where I can take the pins out? Right there. Now I can stop stabbing myself on the backside. It's not fun to be sticking yourself. That. Uh -uh. It's more pleasurable that way. I'm out of there. Okay. Now, if you're making your own pattern without using a bag to cover it like this, um, you don't have as much stiffness on your layers. So I just didn't have the time frame for it. I have more time to do do it this way because doing the other way, you have to install your zippers. These are already installed. So I just gotta work around them. Uh, we're almost there, I promise. We're almost there. I'm just making sure I get around the stuff without catching those teeth in there. That's the, that's the, that's the tedious part. It's trying not to catch the teeth in there. And you can do it. Yes, you can. All right, now. This is the part that took how many yeah. Okay. Now this is at a really bumpy zipper spot in it. So I'm going to do it this way. I ended the row on the other side. Of course this pin caught everything in it, and that's why it was acting stupid. Hey pin, you're not supposed to catch stuff. That's why I couldn't move it. It's like, why is it not moving? The pin had caught the inner layer on me. Take that out. I'm taking all these other pins out. Taking all the pins out. Now that I've stitched the inside to the outside. In here. I didn't even want to catch the corners. It's crazy. All right. In order to finish it, finish it off. So I'm stitching those two layers together is take the every single pin out because it's all stitched away around except for the last inch or so and it's just kind of hanging off there it happens when you get some some of these designs that i came up with it'll do that um and you, the best way that i've learned to deal with them you take all the pins out you've got about an inch of something to deal with the best way to deal with that little tedious spot that doesn't want to let you sew it is this. Put it all back inside. If you're going to really actually use it. Because you don't have this stitch. You zip this up. <laughs> oh, come on. Pull it up. Pull that up. The first one I did, I didn't have that much trouble with it. This one is just a booger today. That's right out of there. You're going to piece stitch it, I call it. You take, line it up on this last inch or so. And it's real slow stitch from there, from where you, you couldn't do it all pinned up. Because now the pins are out of the way. So you're going to stitch all the way up to the zipper on both sides. And then it's good to go. And it will be finito. So I'm going to stick it back under there. Of course, now your fingers are, are, your, are your pins. So <laughs> be careful of your fingers. That thread out of the way. Making sure that half inch is turned down. And just under that zipper. And it's like, mm, slippery stuff. <laughs> down slippery stuff. There we go. Yeah, those pins make it hard at the very end for you to do it without getting literally stuck stuck.
You're not supposed to do that so fast. You're sewing machine. I told you that before. Put that in there. Pump it down. And put that one down. Okay, that's one side. I guess you flip it to the other side. Actually, I'm just going to cross the other side. This makes it easier that way. Mm -hmm. Trim these up some. I'll thread hang out. Oh, i got to press it. That's what, I was like, what is wrong with that? It's kind of, it was like a crease that I had pressed into the I don't know, I'll just start crease out of there. Now you do the other side. This. Come on. Upsy daisy. And then what I'll do in the opening on the outside is I'll, I'll just whip stitch it by hand. If that's the easiest way to get around a bumpy zipper like that. Just to whip stitch it by hand. But I do want to pin this one side on the other side. Just to keep it from wiggling around as I do this side. Uh, you stay there, honey. Stay in the corner. Don't be bad. Bad to me. <laughs> okay. okay. I gotta do it this way. Oh, I did it backwards. It's hard to get that zipper past it. I'm going to. It's not just me. These things are just funny. Okay. And then after you do that, after you whip, I'm just going to whip stitch around it with the half inch tucked under. Because then you can close it up like around the zipper. And then it, because <laughs> it's tight. Oh, I've got a pin on the way. I forgot. Get that pin out of there. And you can just zip it shut. And you have a nice little pickup bag. I don't know if you can see it. Hey, light, we need you. Here we go with the flashlight again. Whoa. It doesn't give much light, does it? But there it is. And it's hard to see because it's dark material. Well, lighting in here like really kind of sucks. Anyway, I know. Who are you? I'm going to use you. Let's see. Can you see? There you can see it now. Isn't that cute? I know. Flare. But, yeah, these little um, gifts are for the bridesmaids. And um, I think they're really going to like them. I think they're really cute. Um, any spots on here that are like, you look at it, it's like, mm -hmm. just do a little hand needle and thread, whip stitch it down. This is my joy and my passion. And I would love to hear any comments you have, good or bad. Hey, other people have better ideas than I do sometimes. I'll appreciate it probably a lot. <laughs> but if sewing becomes your thing, cool. Um, it's, 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 it's some way of just really showing your own creativity. Let me know uh, what you would like to see. Please share my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that little like button. And also, please, please subscribe. Keep me on here so I can find out more things to do and figure out more stuff that helps you. As always, 